All right, so I start by recalling what is, for me, the uh, main lesson from GR, which is that space-time uh, geometry is gravity, and which means in practice that space-time itself becomes a physical system. And from this, one can take the uh, one can take this as the departure point from saying that for saying that quantum gravity is not about quantizing GR, so quantizing a certain classical theory, but understanding what is the microscopic structure of space-time itself. That's what quantum gravity should do. We would like, I mean, the first guess would be to try to use a quantum field theory framework for understanding the microstructure of space-time, because quantum field theory is the framework for all the uh, microscopic theories we know for matter and all physical systems. There is a, a first issue with this uh, idea of using a quantum field theory framework, which is that one would immediately ask, okay, quantum field theory on which space? And in fact, quantum gravity should explain the origin and properties of space-time itself. This is what goes under the label of background independence. So it can only be some quantum field theory on some auxiliary or meta space or some internal space. <coughs> and the second question is, okay, a quantum field theory of what? I mean, what are the basic quanta? Well, it, wait. It has to be a quanta of space itself, whatever that exactly means. So there should be fundamental excitations of space around nothing, around the not even space exist state. All right, so the key features of this formalism, of the group field theory formalism, is that, uh, okay, the basic field is uh, a generally complex field over several copies of a group manifold. And usually one chooses the Lorentz group for models uh, that aim at describing quantum gravity. You can expand the field in modes. That means in irreducible representations of uh, the same group. And a pictorial picture a pictorial representation of the field is that it represents building blocks of quantum geometry that can be represented either as uh, synthesis, triangles in uh, three dimensions, or tetrahedra in four dimensions, or equivalently, dually, as uh, uh, spin network graphs, spin network vertices. So vertices with um, edges coming out of them and labeled by either group elements or group representations. One chooses a, an action, a classical action for this field. And the key feature of this action is that the, uh, okay, of course the specific model is going to be specified by the choice of kinetic term and interaction term. But again, the key feature common to all the models for gravity that have been studied is that uh, the combinatorics of the argument, the interaction term, reflects the combinatorics of uh, d minus two phases in a d-simplex. Again, in, in simple words, if the field is taken to represent a triangle in three dimensions, the arguments of the four fields entering in the action are identified to reproduce the pattern of the gluing of edges in a tetrahedron. So to each vertex corresponds a tetrahedron in three dimensions. To each vertex, it will correspond a four simplex in four dimensions. And the kinetic term just represents the gluing of two of these fundamental building blocks. As a consequence, so by construction, the Feynman expansion of the partition function will be such that the Feynman diagrams have the structure of simplicial complexes of the arbitrary topology. This means, uh, oh, and the second key property for all the models for quantum gravity that have been studied is that uh, the Feynman amplitude associated to each of these Feynman diagram can be interpreted or put uh, uh, directly in correspondence with simplicial path integrals for gravity on the given uh, simplicial complex corresponding to the Feynman diagram. This means that we try to formulate quantum gravity as a sum over simplicial complexes, that's the sum over Feynman diagrams, for all topologies produced as interaction processes, so again, as Feynman diagrams, and they are weighted by a simplicial gravity path integral. Okay, so these are the key features of the approach. Now I'm going to try to convince you that that's interesting. So at a more formal level, 
One reason of interest is that, uh, in my opinion, group free theories can represent a unified framework for all approaches, all discrete approaches to quantum gravity, and most of those at least that are currently studied. First of all, the, one can show that the uh, quantum states of group free theories are given by spin networks, which in turn have been identified by the canonical quantization of loop quantum gravity as the quantum states of geometry. Um, the Feynman amplitudes, in turn, coming from group field theories, are generically spin form models, which again are being studied currently as uh, a part integral formulation of the dynamics of spin networks, so the quantum states identified by loop quantum gravity. Then, as I said, uh, for a single Feynman amplitude, a group field theory uh, defines a discrete quantum gravity path integral of the same type uh, as those uh, defining quantum radio calculus. And on top of this, group field theory describes a sum over these simplicial complexes weighted by a simplicial gravity path integral, which is also the spirit of, dynam of the dynamical triangulation approach. Okay, the However, the main problem of all the discrete approaches to quantum gravity is the so-called problem of the continuum. So you have a, maybe, hopefully, a well-defined theory of uh, the microscopic structure of space-time, even by discrete building blocks. How come does it look continuum on larger scales? Can you derive continuum space-time and geometry? And possibly, show that the dynamics of this continuous space-time geometry is uh, described by Einstein's general relativity. Well, what, here is the, uh, the last speculative part. Well, take group field theory seriously as the fundamental description of uh, the uh, microstructure of quantum space. We need uh, to study the corresponding many particle regime, so the states uh, and uh, and configurations uh, for many GFT quanta. But now we can use ideas from condensed matter theories and analog gravity models and apply them, so in particular the idea of space-time as a sort of a condensate or a fluid of, mis of discrete microscopic constituents. And we can try to apply this idea uh, to the framework of group field theories and use uh, quantum field theory tools. That means uh, study GFT phases and phase transitions, and basically I'm supporting the idea that Fotini was putting forward of geometrogenesis in the case in which that is interpreted as a GFT condensation. And a continuous space-time should be, in this picture, a fluid phase for a GFT. Okay, and the last speculation is that general activity will arise from uh, the group field theory framework, and more specifically from the GFT hydrodynamics in this condensed phase. So that's the general picture. And I just leave you with the messages. Thank you.